All right. Well, welcome to uh, um, the biology of the of the mind. And for a lot of people, including some great philosophers like Aristotle and Plato, um, we've been always puzzling over where exactly the mind might be. Uh, but when we talk about biology, generally we're talking about actual body structures and organs. Um, and when we talk about uh, the actuality of mind, um, I think most people would probably agree that this is the more uh, ephemeral part of us. Um, and just as these scientists to, to the left suggest that you can't have a mind without a brain, but you can have a brain without a mind. And that, that's often found in our, our phraseology of, of losing one's mind um and and that's you know generally that's part of the bigger picture i suppose that you could also add in um some discussion about the soul and the mind being some what uh synonymous for some people at least uh for a, a christocentric world view our tendency is to see our soul as as a spiritual part of us but for people that aren't necessarily operating from um from that particular point of view, they would they would probably put these two things together. Uh, the thing to keep in mind before we go much further is to understand that that uh, um, we're going to be looking at really the the matter of uh, how biology uh, creates this space for what we refer to as the mind, and and without a body. Um, we would have a, perhaps a brain, um, but it certainly wouldn't have our, uh, a mind at all. And uh, it has been a vexing issue in psychology for quite some time. Um, and like I've mentioned before in some of the past videos, is that psychology itself actually has uh, has its roots in um, philosophy, and that's why we are so strongly. Um, influenced by people like Aristotle and Plato. So let's take a look for a minute real briefly at uh, the history as to how we got to where we are and some of the basis on which um, we begin to uh, take apart, begin to understand the nature of the brain itself. Now as is often the case we we always look back a little bit at least to understand the the um, backdrop with which we have um, moved forward or come to where we are today I should say and in in the 1800s uh, one of the the primary movers of of um, um, looking at the nature of the brain and what goes on there is a guy by the name of Franz Franz Gall and and his idea and what he did was down in the, the right hand corner down here is what was referred to as phrenology and it was really kind of the first attempt to try to understand uh, the layout or uh, the parts of the brain and so when you look at his diagram down here you will see just uh, areas for, uh, you know, for example, perception. He has this little area right here that he refers to as perception. And really what, what he proposed and is still very much part of us, uh, part of our understanding today, is the idea of um, localization of function. And he kind of stumbled on it. Phrenology fell out of out of uh, favor uh, because of really of its lack of uh, uh, reliability, if you will. But localization of function is really a key concept that we still actually have um, after uh, Gall and his work with phrenology. So it's by the fact that phrenology has completely uh, gone the way of the dodo bird, so to speak. Um, localization of function is a key concept. The other concept and, and it, it's one that we will be really uh, kind of building on here and you you may be thinking well I thought I signed up for psychology 
um, not uh, biology. And yet there's a lot about this that um, when we understand how the brain works, uh, the nature of neurons and so forth, the variety of, of um, psychology begins to be pretty clear because we're looking at neurology and the comp composition of cells and the interplay that exists between uh, biology and behavior. And like I've been mentioning, even when we talked about uh, the um, uh, the shootings that happened here in Colorado a number of weeks back, um, biology and behavior are really in clear view. And you see people, uh, talking heads, talking about this thing, and really they will fall on one of these two continuums. It's all about biology and and um, uh, perhaps a disease perspective versus disordered behavior. And so... Um, there are two things to keep in mind. Phrenology, that's part of our history that comes down through Gaul, and the biological perspective where we have actually developed the capacity to identify key areas of the brain that function like movement here and thinking and judging and feeling here uh, that are part of uh, the things that, that we have discovered about functions within the brain that function and are wired together um, that uh, Gall and many other uh, philosophers and even early psych pioneers in psychology could even imagine us discovering about it itself. So a biological perspective is a key uh, to understand and then of course phrenology which is the forerunner of our biological perspective. So let's uh, talk about the basic components, the way, and we're going to start at a microscopic level and slowly but surely, even over the course of the semester, um, uh, build one building block at a time. And everything, everything starts with this, the, the, the uh, neuron cell body itself. It's made up of, of fibers out here that are all part of the dendrite and the cell body is the actual aspect here or the actual component that is the uh, fuel supply. It is the uh, uh, epicenter of all that uh, goes on in your nervous system um, to uh, to uh, determine really what um, happens in e even as I talk. Actually, uh, the irony is is that we're studying something that we're using continuously, and it's the life support system, um, and it's really the 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 place where everything happens, processes that uh, are are happening. Uh, to make the nerve signal uh, move along and, and do what it was supposed to do essentially uh, all along. So the cell body itself, um, and we'll take each component part, but we have the dendrites out here. This goes towards an axon, and the cell body is the life support system of the entire system continuously. The thing to keep in mind, and we'll, I'll take this apart, but dendrites... Um, and this is an easy way to remember it, uh, they listen. And axons, which take the signal away, and that's one way to remember an axon, is the A word, but uh, the axons are the things that speak. And so what receives the signal is the dendrite, what takes the signal away is the axon. 